In my last video, I talked about how there isn't much media that accurately depicts the tween experience, those late childhood and early teen years that pass by in a blur of training bras and Claire's makeup products. Oh, to be a tween again putting on sparkly lip gloss and crappy blue eyeshadow with one of those sponge wand things that absolutely does not work. Anyways, there is one film that not only depicts the tween experience, but captures it accurately. And that film is Eighth Grade, the brainchild of comedian and internet personality Bo Burnham, who in his feature debut shines a light on those forgotten years in all their awkward and ungainly glory. It is the first and only film that I've seen that really captures how it feels to grow up in the age of the internet and social media. There is so much I could say about this film and will say about this film. So without further ado, and before I hype it up too much, let's talk about 8th grade. 8th grade revolves around Kayla, who, as you might have guessed, is in 8th grade. The film is a character study of Kayla as she goes through her last week of middle school. So plot-wise, the film is pretty straightforward. Kayla doesn't have any friends, she's voted most quiet in her grade, and she spends her spare time making YouTube videos on self-improvement tips that garner few views. We see her navigating school with all its popularity politics and quintessentially American school shooter drills. She acts romantically experienced to get the attention of her crush, Aiden, but with little success. At home, she has a tense relationship with her single dad, Mark. Kayla partakes in a high school shadow program and befriends Olivia, a bubbly senior who invites her to hang out at the mall with her and her friends. One of these friends, Riley, gives Kayla a lift home and pressures her into an inappropriate game of truth or dare. She later watches a video she made two years earlier for her time capsule, and she opens up to her dad and his validation enables her to realize her self-worth. Her newfound confidence sparks her to stand up for herself. No longer enamored by Aiden and the popular girls, she calls out Kennedy for being mean to her. The newly hopeful Kayla forges a friendship with Gabe as they bond over chicken nuggets and Rick and Morty. The film ends on an optimistic note as Kayla relinquishes grand ideas of what high school will bring and looks forward to the future. Bo Burnham was inspired to make 8th grade after he fell down a YouTube rabbit hole of girls giving middle school advice videos. Girls with little to no views speaking confidently into the YouTube abyss. Maybe it's because I tried to become a beauty guru at the age of 11, the golden age of this is my makeup collection and I'm not trying to brag in any way, shape or form. But Kayla's interaction with social media is the most realistic I've ever seen put to film. Whether it's profile picture photo shoots, Hollister t-shirts, or YouTube beauty tutorials, every detail is imbued with cultural accuracy. Teens have acne and baby fat, and the dialogue is natural. Kids shout out Vine references and make fart noises during school assemblies. School. Project. Yes, yeah, but. <laughs> Are you my mom? The script includes a lot of filler words with ums and likes peppered throughout, words that are often prevalent in popular speech but omitted from screenplays. It feels like teenagers talking rather than a middle-aged screenwriter putting words in their mouths. Bo Burnham transcribed teen vlogs to capture teen speech patterns, but I also think part of the accuracy is down to the fact that Elsie Fisher, who plays Kayla, helped to inform the script. Kayla's Gucci was something Fisher herself did that was written into the script. The portrayal of the teen daughter dad dynamic is scarily accurate to the point that I forced my dad to watch it with me and I think he might have thought it was a documentary. Kayla's attitude towards her dad encapsulates the tension between wanting to be independent and wanting validation from a guiding figure. Teens speak to their parents in hushed, hurried sentences, humiliated by their very existence. The film captures developing sexuality without sexualizing its teen characters, which is the pitfall of so many teen films and shows. Kayla practices kissing on the back of her hand as she stalks her crush's Instagram and watches oral sex tutorials on YouTube. Then there's the gut-wrenching scene of her and Riley in the car, the older teen boy who takes advantage of Kayla's naivete and inexperience to goad her into a sexual truth or dare and berates her hesitation, saying it was for her own good. 
The scene is balanced and nuanced as it captures the predatory nature of older boys on young girls, going far enough to make us uncomfortable, but not too far that it feels exploitative. While some scenes are painful and uncomfortable, there's enough comedy to offset the cringe. The pounding music and slow motion zooms as Kayla's crush walks across the class are hilarious. From the off-tuned school band with the rat-tailed band teacher to the weird kid with scuba goggles, Burnham makes the most of the simplest moments to turn them into spots of hilarity. So much of the visceral effect of this film is as much to the credit of the actors as to Bo Burnham. Elsie Fisher is an incredible actor and she carries the weight of the film on her young shoulders. Her performance is perfect. She captures the awkward energy of 13 year olds without it ever feeling fake or forced. The supporting cast is equally talented, from Josh Hamilton who plays Mark to Jake Ryan's Geeky Gabe, but Fisher really shines through as Kayla. We've seen a lot of underdogs and social outcasts put at the center of coming of age narratives, but 8th grade feels different. Though they detail the trials of adolescence, it's often late adolescence that takes the center stage rather than the awkward tween years. In 8th grade, there are no grand gestures, romantic or otherwise, or wild parties. It's just a week in the life of a 13 year old. And though the premise sounds deceptively simple, it captures the agony and anxiety of growing up in a digital age. It is, rather than a coming of age, a... Eighth Grade is not only a coming of age, but a cultural documentary on how technology has become linked to our existence. In his review of the film, Robert Baker contrasts Eighth Grade to the coming of age narratives that preceded it. Whereas the characters in Clueless, Fast Times, Heathers, and its offspring Mean Girls have to navigate cliques, Kayla and her peers are on their own, in a digital war of all against all, preening, pretending, and pontificating as much to themselves as to an anonymous audience. And through this inner digital war, Burnham explores the public versus private persona, how the self that we broadcast on the internet is often very different from our true self. Bo Burnham is no stranger to the topic of the internet and performativity. It's something he's explored through all of his comedy specials, but 8th grade literalizes the public-private divide through Kayla and her YouTube channel. 8th grade's exploration of these themes sets itself apart from other films that tackle internet culture like Ingrid Goes West and mainstream. Where these films explore the implications of internet success, 8th grade looks at the creators who don't experience success, instead speaking into the virtual void. We hear Kayla's voiceover giving confidence tips as she walks, hunched over and anxiously avoiding eye contact. It highlights the nature of performativity and how people often only show the highlight reels of their lives online. She gives the very advice that she needs to hear and expresses her frustration that people don't see the real her. She says, I'm not like quiet. I just choose not to talk a lot at school. But is also voted most quiet. In her YouTube videos, she's projecting the self she wishes she were until she could embody that in real life. The internet acts as a source of guidance for Kayla. The adults of the film, people you would imagine are the main influences, are inept or absent. The adults don't understand the new form of communication that their kids and students use, and this leads to a lot of issues with communication. Woefully out of touch lit sex ed videos play in the background of a class that no one's paying attention to, and there's minimal contact with teachers, and Kayla's strained relationship with her dad translates into a lack of communication. Communication. Invitations come as DMs. We see these come in in real time. Burnham films actual phone screens instead of resorting to bubbles that pop up on screen. And elsewhere, the blue-hued glow of the screen illuminates Kayla's face in a spotlight as she surfs the web. The direction shows how Burnham is well accustomed to late night endless scrollings with tired eyes and glowing screens. All of this plays out against a background of synth music composed by Anna Meredith, an electronic score that's fitting for a film that revolves so heavily around technology. As a whole, Eighth Grade is an unflinching and honest look at how, in the age of social media, we can feel lonelier than ever despite being connected to everyone. 
One of Burnham's aims with this film was to capture the feeling of social anxiety. Alongside cinematographer Andrew Wade, he illustrates social anxiety and isolation through the cinematography. In the beginning of the film, when Kayla is most lonely, the camera acts as a barrier, boxing Kayla off from her surroundings. There's a lot of zooms where the frame is pushed in, cutting her out of the world she belongs to and illustrating her sense of isolation before pulling out to reveal the scene around her. The pool party scene is the pinnacle of how the subjective filmmaking captures social anxiety. She's literally separated from the others, watching through the glass door, a spectator to the 8th grade social scene rather than a participant. It shows the vulnerability of exposing your changing body amidst a sea of peers who are essentially strangers. It's only during her day in the shadow program that she begins engaging with her environment. The slow zooms out reveal her talking to Olivia and Olivia's friends, replacing the previous zooms where she was subdued and silent. Kayla's bubble continues to grow as she opens up to her dad. They hug, occupying the same cinematic space instead of the fragmented and distanced shots that framed them before. Four. By the end of the film, Kayla is able to contextualize the fact that the hellhole that is school is only temporary. She's hopeful that the future brings more friendships and positive experiences, but even if not, that's okay too. Eighth grade shows us that our anxieties and our experiences with the internet are far from singular. Burnham strips back the layers of satire and irony that pervade his comedy, instead laying bare the tween experience and allowing it to unfold naturally. And rather than the mocking jibes thrown at millennials and Gen Z's dependence on technology that pervade other media, the film is a celebration of young people and a deep dive into their involvement in the internet. Where Bo Burnham's comedy specials are often pointed and cynical, 8th grade is hopeful and sincere. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but 8th grade suggests that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And though this light may be the late night glow of a phone or a MacBook, it's a light nonetheless. Um, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I asked you all in a poll whether you would prefer more sit down elements like this or keep the style to my usual and it was pretty much 50 50 so I tried to find a happy medium in this video and let me know what you think if you like these sit down elements if you want more if you want less. I'm excited to hear your input and thank you for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.